Hey there, <clears throat> Steve Hart. I'm going to try to give you a wrap up for our coffee talk last week. Um, and uh, it's, the, the, here it is Saturday in, in the afternoon and the sun's already going down again. So I want to get this done before it gets too dark in here. Um, um, and, I, and again, I, I'm lucky I don't have any shows today. I was busy yesterday. I had three shows yesterday. So here I am. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, spirit connection. Uh, that was one of the things we touched on on Thursday, and I thought it was very, very interesting. And um, you, you've heard me say uh, that we are human beings having a human experience, but we're also spiritual beings having a human experience, um, meaning the fact that that we're, we as humans are trying to figure out who we are. And the truth is, we were spirit beings before we came into this world in physical form. Now, you can believe what you want to believe about that. Um, so what does that mean? Well, obviously, it means that we had a consciousness before we came into this world. And when we came into this world as, as children, uh, we had amnesia. <laughs> and there's a reason why this, this happens. Now, today, here recently, in recent years, there have been many children who are coming into the world, and they are remembering uh, their past lives or remembering who they are, and they're bringing with them uh, some remarkable gifts and insight as to uh, who they are and what is going on in our world today. I'm not going to get into that, but what I am going to share with you, and and I and this is a little bit difficult for me, but I, I have to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to approach it from my Christian background because I, I came from a, a Christian rearing, and so therefore I'm going to share with you uh, from the Bible uh, a story in where Jesus um, met Nicodemus. Now, if you've not heard the story, it's in John 3, 7, uh, and that, in, in that area there. So in John 3, uh, 3 he said, Jesus um, is approached by Nicodemus. Now, let me explain to you. Nicodemus was a, a Pharisee. He was a ruler of the Jews and um, a very educated man when it comes to the Jewish law and, and, and the the teachings of the the Jewish faith. And he comes to Jesus and he says to him, he calls Jesus Rabbi. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the, the, these things and signs unless God is with them. So Jesus answered him, and he said, Nicodemus, <laughs> most surely I say unto you, unless one is born... And again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus is confused by it. He says, what do you mean you have to be born again? I mean, am I supposed to go into my mother's womb and be born again? And, he, and Jesus came back and he said, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you're born of the water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. For that which is flesh is born of flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel what I say to you, you must be born again. Now, obviously, you know, you would think um, that Jesus would, could have done a better job maybe explaining to uh, Nicodemus what he was trying to explain or what he's trying to say. At the same time, you have to understand the, the level of consciousness of mankind at that time. Now, so what I'm, what, here's what I'm getting at. We can talk the talk, and we can know the walk, <laughs> but if it's not happening within us, then we've still yet to discover who we truly are. We're, tr we're, we're still yet to have what is referred to as the born-again experience. Now, Christianity has, in my opinion, distorted what that means. They make it sound as though it's a one-a-time event. But the word says born again. Born means to be born like you're born like a child and you're brought in as a baby. But the word again is an adverb. It's a verb, meaning it's something that's happening over and over and over again. And it, impl implication means it is a birthing experience from above. That's the Greek word. The Greek word is, um, here, I got it right here. It is um, anathen. Is a, is a Greek word. It means to be born from above, and uh, so, <clears throat> so what we're what we're talking about here is is uh, it's an ongoing 
birthing experience is what it is. That's this is that's what that's what it means to be born again. And <clears throat> I quite commonly call it the awakening. Uh, because basically, as I said a while ago, we've had amnesia. We forgot who we are, and we're, we're all of a sudden awakening to the truth of who we are. And so it's an ongoing daily experience. We become more and more and more and more aware of who we are and the truth of all things. And that awareness comes from within. So therefore, um, this born-again experience is something that happens inside you. Now, in our discussion on Thursday, um, Somebody was sharing with them that they had trouble understanding uh, some of the woo-woo part of the spiritual stuff, you know, verbiage and so forth. And they were thinking, I'm more right brain or more left brain, rather, a little more logical side. And they think of the human body more as like a machine. And I can understand that, that perception. And um, so w someone in the group tried to, to share with someone how that exactly works. And if you understand the, the teachings of the 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 body, and then the spiritual body, and the connection of the two. There, there are two, two, the two are one, <laughs> in a sense. I mean, and there is what we call chakras. These are energy centers throughout the body that go on through the head to the crown. Um, and then there is what we call the third eye. And so these these are like tools or switches that can be turned on and opened up. And through this, you. you through this experience, you will have what they call the Kundalini rise. Um, uh, I'm not an expert in this area. All I can tell you is I had that experience. That has happened with me. Now, I call it the baptism of love because when I had this experience, it was like someone opened my head and began to pour warm water down through my body, and I could feel this rush of energy coming through, and it was nothing but pure love. That's all I can describe it to you. And that experience that I had is with me to this day. And uh, it's, it, it's an ongoing rebirthing of who I am. Now, you can be like Nicodemus and have all this knowledge in your head and, and speak all the verbiage and say the right things. But if you haven't had that true connection, to the spirit, you've yet to experience something, the most beautiful, wonderful part of what this is all about. And so my encouragement to you is to seek. Now, the reason um, the reason a lot of people do not have this experience, the reason they're not, not experiencing this connection, this relationship with spirit is because they've not asked. Most people are afraid to open up their hearts and their minds and ask, to connect now, when 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 I refer to making connection with spirit, I'm referring to the connection to your higher self. That you are that is the spirit being of who you are, and that is your connection to all things, to the source of all things. Uh, so your body has within it that spirit being. If it didn't, you'd be dead. Okay, but it's there. So I'm. I'm asking you in faith, if you don't completely understand it, to ask. Ask the spirit, your higher self, to reveal itself to you. And that, it, it, will, it will respond to you. Now, sometimes it may not happen just like that. It may take a few days. It may take weeks. But you know what? If you ask and you keep asking, it will reveal itself to you. It wants to reveal itself to you. Spirit will speak to you words of love and comfort and encouragement. If you go read the um, in John, um, I don't know what chapter it is. I think it's uh, 15, 16, something like that. Jesus is making a description of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit will come and be as a comforter to you. And, uh, yes, it's John 16. I was right. And so <clears throat> read, read some of that section if you want to get an idea as to how it speaks to you. The The... Holy Spirit, the, the, the higher self of you, will never shame you or judge you. It can only speak the truth of what is what is and who you are and the, how much it loves you. It will, it will become a guide. He said it will guide you into all truth. So it's one thing to talk about all this spiritual stuff. It's another thing to actually have the experience. 
And uh, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. And um, that's what we touched on in, on Coffee Talk on Thursday. Of course, we had a lot of other things we discussed about. But <clears throat> that was the one thing that stuck with me. And I'm probably going to come back and talk about this some more because I know I'm just scratching the surface. And you may have questions for me. So if you, if you do, um, please get in touch with me, and I'll be happy to, to answer your questions. At the same time, sit there and ask. Ask the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the divine Spirit within you to reveal itself to you, to be, communicate with you. And you'll begin to hear that voice. It will speak to you. It, 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 it may not be clear at first, but it will speak to you. And it will be speaking uh, love. It will be speaking um, an experience that you've never had before if you don't know what I'm talking about. So, God bless. Namaste. Bye-bye.